Is there only one way to solve this equation? In this lesson, you will learn to solve linear equations with rational numbers by looking at examples with decimals. When adding and subtracting decimals, it is important to remember to line up the decimal points. Sometimes this involves adding zeros as placeholders. The decimal point in the answer is also lined up with the decimal points in the problem. Adding signed decimals is just like adding integers in terms of the signs. If both numbers have the same signs, you add the two values and keep the sign. If one number is positive and one is negative, you will subtract the two values and keep the sign of the larger absolute value. Again, remember to keep the decimal points lined up and add zeros as placeholders where necessary. When multiplying and dividing decimals, you don't have to line up the decimal points. If you are multiplying, just multiply as if the numbers were whole numbers. Then count the number of places, decimal places in the problem, and starting at the right in the product, count that many places to the left, then place your decimal point. If you are dividing, set up the problem as you normally would, but then move the decimal point in the divisor to the right until you have a whole number. Move the decimal point in the dividend the same number of places, and then divide as usual. Place the decimal point in the quotient so that it is right above the decimal point in the dividend. Let's look at an example equation that contains decimals. This equation can be simplified by distributing on the right. Now we can transform the equation to a simpler form by using inverse operations. Notice how when transforming, I perform the same operations equally on both sides to maintain equality. I also add in zeros as placeholders as needed to line up decimal points when adding. So 8 equals x. Since we ended with a variable equal to a constant, there is only one solution to this equation. Let's look at a second example. This equation also has some distributing that can be done on the right. But I also notice that the group inside the parentheses can be, um, are like terms that can be combined. So I'm going to start solving this equation by adding the 3 and the 4 together. This way I only have to distribute to two terms instead of three. Then I'm going to distribute the negative 0.4 to the entire group in the parentheses. Now we will transform the equation to a simpler form by using inverse operations. Notice again how when transforming, I perform the same operations equally on both sides to maintain equality. And I, again, add zeros as placeholders where necessary. So I end up with x equals negative 73.3 repeating. Again, this is the only solution since we are left with a variable equal to a constant. A common misunderstanding when solving equations is to think that there is only one way to find the value of the variable. For example, in the last equation that we solved, we combined the like terms and then distributed to start off with. However, this isn't the only way to find the value of x. This is just one method. Another method that would work is to just go ahead and distribute before combining like terms. We will have to distribute to an extra term, but let's see how the rest of the problem works out when we go ahead and do this. Once we distribute the negative 0.4 to the whole group in the parentheses, we can simplify further by combining the like terms. Then we are right back to where we were in the last method. We can transform the equation to a simpler form from here by using the same method and same inverse operations we used in the last method. and we end up with the exact same solution we had before. In this lesson, you have learned to solve linear equations with rational numbers by looking at examples with decimals.